We're doing this live. We're doing it live. Yeah. We're good. Absolutely We're up and running. Live. So this is what life feels like. So this, is life, this is what life feels not like. Much, not much different than not life. Exactly. Yeah. So what we do is we look right there, and normally we'll start getting people that'll pop on here. Okay. Uh, we actually have some regulars that actually will cuss us out because we started three minutes late. Uh -oh. yeah. Yeah, Which is happen. a great problem to have. There's our there's president there's of our fan club. Yeah. Actually, Dean was just asking me for an address. I'm like, dude, I ain't got time. <laughs> you see what time it is, Dean. <laughs> Morning, Dan. Are you on the bike this morning, there, buddy? Yeah, or is it Starbucks? Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. So they can they hear us, but we just see their. Yeah, they can comment. They tell us what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and sometimes we'll have shows where we only have like thirty comments, and then a couple weeks ago it was like one hundred fifty-seven comments. Oh yeah. Oh. And we're trying to keep up. <laughs> okay. So yeah. that's our goal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the goal. People. And then we also tag the Phil Food Bank, so. They should see it as well. Yeah, so uh, I'd be interested to see who sees that one and pops up. I can't <laughs> believe it's <laughs> start three minutes late. Yep, yep. Uh, Charles, morning guys, go see us, go Mariners. Boy, Charles, the wheels are falling off right now on the Mariners. <laughs> Dane says, no, heading to the gym for a little bit to murder myself. boy. Good job, man. Attaboy. Good for you. You know what? I know we haven't started, we haven't officially started the show yet. Yeah. So maybe we should do that and then I'll share what I was going to share. Yeah, go for it. All right. Hey, good morning, you guys. This, that's Luke. I'm Rory. And this morning we have an awesome special guest here, Jim Bedoin. Perfect. See? There you go. Nailed it. From the Pyalt Food Bank. And we are going to talk about the peanut butter food drive and peanut butter and everything to do with peanuts. Yes. Jim knows, Jim knows everything about peanuts. Absolutely. Uh, I think about peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, it goes in the jar, out of the jar, to folks that are hungry. Hey, so. we've got Michael watching, so we'll just go ahead and throw down the gauntlet on Michael. Yep. We're expecting big things from uh, Sterling Inspections on the peanut butter food drive this year, Michael. So yeah, we're issuing challenges to all of our partners. Yeah, we, we actually just got done talking with Brian here at Anthem this morning. And yeah. He's still behind the counter. Uh, Brian... Breaking news, Brian said you guys can bring peanut butter down here if you want to. We're going we'll to have a drop-off station. We're going to have a drop-off station here at yep. uh, Anthem. So Pretty cool. Uh, what I was going to say is, talking about Dane murdering himself, yes. I got a Facebook notification this morning that showed a picture of me four years ago, just before I ran oh, my half marathon. When you were in shape? And, I, and I'm looking at the picture <laughs> and I'm like, who's the skinny fit guy? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And then I started crying. Yeah. I've done the same thing quite a few times. Stop looking at my Facebook memories. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we got uh, Jim brought us these awesome uh, stickers. These, uh, well, they're uh, bumper stickers, window stickers. Yeah. I'm a super hunger hero of Yellow Bank, so these are awesome. My daughters are stoked, so Thanks, thank you for that. Yeah, appreciate it. Part of the team. So, you want to talk a bit about what we got yeah, going so on? Let Jim off. jump in. Um, I actually got in touch with Jim last week, yep. and uh, before that, before Jim was the executive director, it was Shanna, yep. and so when I stopped by there last week and said, hey, can I get together with Shanna, I'd like to sit down with Shanna and talk about this, uh, Rachel says, Shanna's retired. Oh, nice. Like, what? <laughs> 15 years of um, just doing a great job for the Pell community she, and she was amazing. Area. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's she um, so, like one of the biggest cheerleaders for the food bank. Still is. Yeah. Good. Still is. Still is. You know, it was just it was just time for a little change for her and everything. Some things she had to go deal with. And, you know, it's been very positive. So, um, you know, I came on last October as the director of operations because our other long time uh, uh, participant, founder, and all that good stuff with the food bank, Bill Franklin. Uh, decided to retire after 29 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, absolutely. like a conspiracy. They brought you in and they were like, all right, we're out. Of yeah, here. see ya. <laughs> <laughs> we found our replacement. We're gone. Good morning, so, Katie. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, no. Um, so that that was that. And then, uh, you know, this opportunity came along and, and uh, they appreciated everything that's been going on and how the food bank could run smoothly. So I am going to get my chance at the helm. Nice. And uh, part of that is the connecting with folks like you. Food drives, independent food drives. Um, you know, we're getting ready to just go right into our uh, call fair opening. Right, right. You know, opening day. So, you know, okay, if you're there, yeah. there's a couple hours, bring a can of food, get in the break. That's very cool. So, yeah, absolutely. Nice. So, that's, that's probably our biggest food drive of the year. That's what I was wondering. I, I, yeah. I figured it would be. Yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, surprisingly enough, not where I get my most peanut butter. So, Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Absolutely. I guess the gun has been thrown down to us. Yeah, exactly. 
Well, let's get right into that. Let's uh, let's talk about peanut butter. Um, I, I told you a little bit of the backstory of why we started doing this. This is our, our third year doing this. Uh, great friend in Virginia, Shannon Milligan, she had been doing this for quite some time. And I said, you know what, I, I love this idea. Um, but I was like, eh, you know, I, I didn't really understand how important it would be. And it happened to be at a Puyallup, uh, sorry, Washington State Fair. Uh, my first day, right. and I was out there, I was helping collect food, and I, that's when I met Shanna for the first time, and I asked her, I said, hey, I have a question for you, do you guys really have a need for peanut butter? And before I could say peanut butter, <laughs> she, yes! Yeah. And, and so at that point I went, okay, perfect, we're going to do it. So that the first year we did it in October, uh, but ever since then we just we figured it would be better to do it in August as you guys are getting ready to have all the kids go back to school. Absolutely. We've basically gone through all the supplies we've been using to help offset the ones that haven't been getting that free or reduced lunch. So, you know, we just see that uptick in the summer uh, right after school about everything because there's a little bit more need for all of a sudden the um, things that they were kind of making it uh, just get by. And that's that's the tough part for us, in, you know, just as Americans, is that, you know, we're, we're just so close on the edge with so many of our families and, and needing just that little bit extra help is, is one of the great benefits that we field that we're providing for folks in the community. Now what is the big what's the big deal about peanut butter? Peanut butter is just a great all around protein. It stores well, carries well. Um, it you know, a lot of people like it. And of course it's a high allergen and everything. But again, it, it, it it's it's easily accessible and it just it's one of the really good complex proteins that people will eat and people can, you know, take with them wherever. And you, know, you can add it to a lot of things to do that. Yeah. Uh, Interesting enough, I was never a peanut butter fan until I started doing food banking about six years ago. Yeah? Yeah, personally, I man, didn't like the taste of nuts and stuff like that. So, <laughs> uh, but it's like just obviously more and more of it around and around and around. And it's like, huh, there are different kinds of peanut butter. <laughs> now you're a PB&J guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. On occasion. Yeah. And, that's, and you know, that, that's so true. There are so many different types of peanut butter out there. I, I've got my own favorite. It's... Uh, I think it's Naturals. Yep. Oh yeah. Crunchy. Yep. I love crunchy. Done. Yeah. Done. I could sit, I could sit my lazy boy with I don't know carrots or celery or crackers and oh this is a bad decision. But well, then was good. <laughs> and everyone there's like the two camps right creamy and crunchy. Yep. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Like people are passionate about whether it's creamy. And in senior year at North Mason we had to do for skills for 21st century which is like home ed. Sure. We had to make a dessert and I decided to make a peanut butter pie. Oh, well, my mom used to make peanut butter cream pie is really good. I always made it with crunchy, right? Because I like crunchy. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, people pick sides. I mean, it was like all out war and class. <laughs> like, why is it creamy, you know? And yeah, people are passionate about their crunchy and creamy. Oh, yeah. no, I'm a creamy guy, but my yeah. dad, when I was growing up, he had a dad's special mix. Mm -hmm. And it was peanut butter, caro syrup, and grape jelly. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, the, the marshmallow uh, Yep, yep. Add in there, and it's all mixed together and everything, and now you're having a cracker. And I would, for whatever reason, that's the only thing with peanut butter I ever ate when I was growing up. Okay. Uh, but everybody else in my family is not allowed to eat all that good stuff. Now, is there a preference as to what kind of peanut butter is dropped off? No, no not at all. Um, uh, we do prefer not the jar, the glass jar, okay. simply because of storage and moving it around all the time, just higher possibility That's of breaking it up. Yeah. Um, the, uh, honestly, the, the smaller jars are better because they fit the bags better. You know, we're, the folks are coming on a regular basis to us when they need to. Um, so that, again, keeps a little uniformity. It's easier for us to be able to serve more. Okay, okay. Um, because you know, I could just assume give them three or four jars of a bigger family and wind up with a big gallon jar that is more economical, but it, the Costco you know, jar. I give like, that to a family of one versus you know, Here you go, peanut butter for life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that, that's great to know because last year we we actually had some people uh, donate big old two three pound containers of peanut butter. Yep. And 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 I was thinking that I was like. Mm, we did. We didn't eat some of those. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll and, take it. And everything. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You Costco take has a great out of deal here. on that double pack of big ones. Yeah. Bring so, it on down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm curious. How How do you work in the community to distribute this stuff? Is it, can families just come down there? Are you distributing the churches or you know, so shelters? We, 
we have kind of a couple of different ways that we do that. So our direct service clients here in the Gallup area, uh, we go by appointment. And a lot of that is just because of the size of our parking lot uh, and just the management of people coming in and out and all that. So we have an appointment-based system. We call the morning of the day you want to come down. Uh, between 9 and about 2, and you can make an appointment that will start serving between 12 and 3. So about every 5 minutes we have an appointment. Wow. Wow. So wow. We're, yeah, we're, we're, in and we're, you know, we're in and we're out. We pre, pre bag the best with essentials yeah. of things for families, depending on the size of your family, and they'll get a bag again and all that good stuff. And then um, as you come in and you sign in, uh, we get uh, you know, allergies and preferences, things like that, and we put all the per perishables that we've got.
wouldn't have as many of the arguments that we seem to have in the, in the area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you come into a place like Anthem, everybody's happy, they're, they're having conversation. You know, and there's some conversations where people are on opposite ends of a discussion. Yeah. They can have that. They're, they know that it's a safe place to do that and everything yeah. else. Right. So why, why is that being extended? I, I, uh, can't get too cool. Yeah, yeah. Get me down that path. A little bit. We lost but, him. Uh, <laughs> he just threw a table over. <laughs> we gotta go. We threw another way. Uh, no, I agree though. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? I mean, it's. Uh, I've had this discussion with a, a lot of people. It's just you know, beyond the helping people and all that kind of stuff, it's the compassion aspect and just understanding that we don't always agree with everything, but. You know, you go a long way to just have a little bit of respect and just, you know, try to understand the point of view. So, absolutely. You know, it's important. Absolutely. You know, um, none of this happens without guys like you, our volunteers. Um, you know, we have over 100 regular, dedicated, hardworking volunteers. They come in there and they're like, how come we don't have this? We want this to give to them. Come on, Jim. We chop, chop. Exactly. <laughs> it, 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 it is. You know, let's make sure that we're going to be able to do this. And you know, they they just don't talk the talk. They walk. It. They get out there. They're they're moving boxes. They're loading bags. They're helping people. Um, you know, we, we uh, just had our fundraising breakfast, and we had this video done, and. Um, I had this, this, this volunteer has been for many, many years coming, and uh, he's uh, had a traumatic brain injury earlier in his life, so you know, he's a little challenged. He comes and helps us uh, three days a week, and to watch how that affects him, how he was uh, seeing the value. Given purpose. Yeah. Yes. I mean, just the honesty and the, and the feeling and emotion that he was when he was talking about it. That's awesome. Uh, it, it's amazing. So, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, maybe I can link that little video with you guys. And that would be oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah we'd love to put that out there. What it is. Yeah. So people, it's a really great story. Uh, one of our clients and everything. Uh, she uh, four kids, single mom, trying to do it all right and everything. Um, it just needs that little bit more help. And, you know, the, the reaction that her kids get from coming, because they're like, yeah, I know, I mean, this is a fun thing. We're going to the food bank. And people are nice to us. Yeah, they want to help us. And, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's a great little bit. Yeah. I, I, to, you don't have a tear. <laughs> we'd, love to, we'd love to host that on our page and get it out for you more. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a good segue because my question is is in the volunteer aspect. Okay. How do you get involved? What kind of volunteer opportunities are there? And do you still have a need? I mean, if you have all these volunteers, oh, is no, there a need? Absolutely. How are you involved? So, uh, there's always a need for more volunteers. One, people go on vacation. Yeah. Okay. Weird. Uh, <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> we, we're not going to get oh. into that today. <laughs> I've been on a lot of vacations lately. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's going to Hawaii next week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I'll Thank see you, you guys. Jim. <laughs> see, I'm not welcome here. Okay, well, that's a little hot over there. Yeah. <laughs> Watch where you're standing. I know, I told, it's going to be hot when he comes back. <laughs> I told my sister, like, could you not have your wedding in, like, January? Like, when I could have escaped the rain here and then gone to... <laughs> well, whatever. Good morning, Stacy. So anyway, volunteer aspect. Yeah, volunteer. So we're, we, we always need more volunteers. Because here's the thing. The more that we can share the load, the easier the load gets. Yeah. So one of the analogies I somebody shared with me many years ago about volunteering and, and everything is, have you guys ever had a piece of green apple pie? Oh, yeah. That, really good. Yeah, really good. Then you had that second piece of green apple pie? Really good. Yeah. But you start eating that third or that fourth or that whole green apple pie, yeah. what happens? It yeah. Happens when we go to sushi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Particularly in green apple pie, you start getting blue. Yeah, you start getting blue. All that yeah. stuff. Too much. Too now much. you don't really like the green apple pie anymore. Right. So it's kind of like volunteering, you know. Yeah, there's there's people that, you know, I've, I've got just this amazing volunteer, retired police officer. She More comes adjusting. down and, you know, she's doing five days a week, 30, 40 hours a week to keep busy and she's fantastic but I know there's a level of burnout that comes with that too and yep. then what happens when oh I mean I've, I've had enough yeah 
All right, so which happens? If, if I said, wait a minute, why don't you come down three days a week, and I got somebody else who's going to come down the other two days a week, and it stays fun and fresh, and you enjoy it, you get to enjoy the rest of your life too, and yep. everything. That's that's how we keep people involved. That's how we keep more people. Involved. Uh, they tell them, talk, and bring your friends. And let's have some fun. We have groups that come and help us rebag stuff. So you can do small corporate groups. You can come in and do something. Uh, we have uh, high school students that come in and do their community service hours. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, you can just get a hold of Rachel, who's our volunteer coordinator, um, and Perfect. through our, our Facebook page, our website, our phone numbers, and everything are on there. And please don't think we have enough help. Okay. We're always a little bit Yeah. Uh, we'll put you in somewhere. Uh, the fair's coming up. We're going to need people at the gate to help gather that food. And, uh, yeah. and uh, ask those folks, say, oh, you forgot your can of food. Here's the bucket. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, if you're good at asking people for things like that, get a hold of us. Come volunteer on, on opening day. Yeah. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll really make an impact. On you. So, when is opening day? August 31st. August year. 31st. Wow. Okay. Okay. In August. So, yeah. basically, yeah. just show up down there and say, hey, I want to help. What no, food? Please, please contact us okay. and get it so that we can go because we'll, we'll, we'll get you the ticket. We'll get you, you know, we'll get, we'll get you all lined up okay. so that it's uh, uh, organized. Okay. That's, the, that's the other thing, we need to stay organized so that it's a beneficial and a wonderful experience for people. We're not running around like chickens in our head <laughs> It'll look like that anyway. Charles but says, uh, uh, Jim, you have a great organization doing great things. Thanks, Charles. Appreciate it. Yeah. Charles is an awesome contributor. He used to live in this area. Now he's down in the Portland, Oregon area. Okay. And so he's still highly plugged in up here with friends and stuff. And so it's always good to see him jump in. So, great. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that I noticed when we dropped off the peanut butter last year, yeah, uh, because people were asking me, uh, are you doing are you doing this for Pierce County? Are you doing this for the Sound area? And I'm like, no, we're, we're doing it for PL Food Bank. However, the one thing I noticed last year when we dropped off the donation is there were other food banks there. And I, not all of the peanut butter made it into the warehouse because they're like, we need some of that. Yeah. So so it doesn't necessarily stay here. You guys partner with other local food banks. Right, as I was saying, we partner with other organizations that are you know, out there have a need and so we're able to help supplement what they're doing because we have such great uh, participation in what we're doing and everything. Awesome. So, you know, we're it's not a hoarding mentality at all. Because the reality is this is for you all up. <laughs> well, primarily. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we gotta be careful about that. that. <laughs> we're, we're here to take care of the folks that are in need here yeah. first and primarily and everything. But again, it's one of those things. If, if you give it away, the guy upstairs knows you need more. It, it comes in. Yeah. It's coming, it happens. And I'm I'm telling you, it is an absolute amazing thing to me that I can sit there and I can I can Oh man, I'm really running low on some frozen proteins and everything. And I start figuring out where we want to go and get that, or what's a good deal. I'm going to have to buy some now. And, and um, you know, a couple hours later, I get a phone call from the trucker, or somebody comes in, and, and you know, what do you need? And all that. And yeah. it, it is absolutely amazing how that happens. That is so cool. incredible. That's a great story. So, what, what would 500 pounds of peanut butter mean? Yeah, what would it mean to our community if that was donated? Well, so a typical jar is a pound. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna basically help five hundred families. Wow. Yeah. So, you you know, know, that's, that's, that that really blows go. my mind to yeah. think that 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 one jar of peanut butter, that one pound of peanut butter, goes so far to yeah. help so many families. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's that's really it's it's. it's Fairly expensive protein that really goes a long way, as we've talked about. Uh, but it's great to have it. You know, they come home from school, they're getting ready to do their homework and stuff. They need that little shot of protein, yeah. rather than just sugar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Let's see, Michael says all the folks over to the inspection group will be happy to help. Please let us know which months and days you need volunteers the most, and we'll see if we can make our schedule work. Oh, that's awesome! Wonderful. Schedule work, thank you. All right, perfect. Yeah, Sterling's uh, so Sterling's our go to uh, home inspection group, okay. and um, they've been between Roy and I, we've been working with them for the last you know eight years or so. And, uh, 
Michael's great. He's the owner down there. Um, he's always willing to jump in and help. And he's done some great things for our clients when you know when there's a need. So uh, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you very much. Yeah. So they will yeah. definitely jump in. And we've had we've had some people, some organizations in the past that have helped out. And so we're gonna we're gonna call them out and say, hey, it's that time of year again. Um, but yeah, yeah. Where's our list? We'll call them out right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just called out Sterling. We have Sterling. We have A Vance who's jumping in. A Vance Septic. Uh, um, it's helping out. Actually, custom home inspections. They donated quite a bit of peanut butter last year, so I got to call them out as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. Chrissy. Some Chrissy, our, I'm talking to you. Some of our lending folks. Fairway, yep. Envoy, um, Mandy. Over at Word Mandy. Evergreen. Evergreen. Yep, yep, over at Evergreen. So, um, yeah, and a lot of them have just been like, hey. Oh, even people. We, it's kind of funny, like Pam. Pam lives in Kent, okay. and she um, she works in Bellevue, and she's like, well, I'll, I'll put a peanut butter thing on our office at our insurance office, and I'll run it to you guys. That and I'm like, great. oh, that's awesome. Thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is, is we're not just, uh, it's not just here. We actually got people, I think I told you before, I had a guy send us peanut butter from Florida. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He actually... Well, there you go. <laughs> You're home. You're neck of the woods, Jim. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, we moved up here a month after the mountain blew up. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, all friends and others. See, they're blowing up mountains. They don't want you to go. <laughs> so this, this is honestly, this is more home than that ever was anymore. Really? So, yeah. And, and <laughs> just the, the community around here is fantastic. Yeah. You know, they, they really support us. They do a great job of making sure that the Food Bank is going to be around to support those in need. They, they have a need and a desire and a want to help those in need. This is good. That's good. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. What does Jim like to do that's not the food bank? <laughs> yeah, when you're not collecting food. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, the typical things we try to do around here and everything. You know, getting outdoors and all that good stuff. I have a little fishing boat that, you know, sometimes. But nice. honestly, I don't eat fish. Really? Oh. I'm the only one in my family who doesn't eat fish. <laughs> I love catching fish. I'm the one who's the water person in the family yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm the aquarium, so yeah, it, it's all there. I love it. Yeah. So, but I throw the line in the water, so I'm not the crazy guy taking a nap on his boat. I'm the crazy guy who fell asleep fishing taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I. Uh, I get that little scratch and loop the speed every once in a while and yeah. stuff, so I kind of have uh, played around with uh, C4 uh, Corvettes for the last uh, couple of years or so. Oh, wow. Yeah, I find one really cheap here and there, and yeah. I get a lot of pleasure out of kind of fixing it up and getting it back reliable and all that, and then sell it off and, and, and all that. So that, that's kind of what that is. But I finally got tired of removing all the fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about, a year, about a year ago, I, I, I said, you know, I, I haven't had a car payment in 10 years. And so uh, I, I went looking and I found me a nice C5. Let's fix that. <laughs> Let's go get a car No, no, it's, there's not to be fixed on that one. <laughs> we don't want any knock on wood. Yeah. We're you know, right there. <laughs> Megan's brought a brand new Corvette. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So one of our lenders. It, it cracks me up. She's like the sweetest, like, I don't, I don't even know how to explain her. I'm just like unassuming. Down to earth. Down to earth. You know, you, I, I just see her like, sorry, Megan, if you're watching this. Oh, no, we're I not sorry at all, Megan. If you're watching this. I see her like in a grocery dinner with the kids. Just, come on, honey, let's get the soccer practice. You know, you'll be at work. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, white snake blaring on the radio. And, and, you know, like, and oh, I love that too. I was, I was talking with Megan and Chrissy yesterday, and uh, <laughs> we were talking about how uh, one of Chrissy's grandkids thought that she was famous because she had attended a private party of a guitar player from Pearl Jam, and he was just doing like an acoustic thing, just kind of nothing yeah. exciting. But the grandson is telling everybody at school that my grandmother is super famous because she knows all these grunge rock bands. She's okay. a roadie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we were talking about the yesterday, and yeah, Megan's like, yeah, you know, I love listening to Metallica and, and White Snake and and all these other hard rock bands. And I'm like, I would not have expected that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Catches you off guard. So, do, uh, sports? Do you follow any of the local sports teams, or you're just like the rest uh, of us? <laughs> only as much as I have to have the conversation. 
There's a few other things on my plate that I have to be more concerned about on a day-to-day -day basis. But, uh, you know, I think that actually the Hawks are moving in the right direction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, quite honestly, they got rid of a lot of um, hot air. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from their team, so I think that uh, they're going to be a lot lighter and faster and be able to get things done. Uh, yeah. So that's probably about as right down the 50-yard line I can walk with that one. So. <laughs> I, you know, I don't disagree. I was listening nope. to uh, Sports Radio yesterday and they said that uh, camp's been interesting because uh, Pete Carroll's guy, they said it's like watching him his first couple years again. He's actually, he's back at that the spot where he likes to be, which is where he's teaching and coaching. Where George the last three or four years when you've had those guys like Richard Sherman, you know, yeah. they've been in a while where it's like there's nothing to teach anymore. Yeah. They do their thing and now he's back to doing what he likes to do. So yeah, I think they're it'll be an interesting year. So yeah, yeah and I think the the one person that we're all talking about on the Seahawks who is not there right now, I don't think he's coming back. Earl um, Thomas. Yeah, I just heard this morning that he put out another uh, another story or something on, on the Players Tribune. And he's basically saying why he deserves to get paid all this money. And and it's just like, yeah, but you know what? You're a, you're a strong safety? Is that what he is, a strong safety? Uh, free safety. Free safety. And right now, free safeties, they're not, they're not paid like other positions. It, well, it's wants... really tough to feel sorry for somebody yeah. making that kind of money playing a game. It's hard work. Not yeah. something I can do. Yeah. And you know, you spend a lot of time being the best at it. And someone's willing to pay you for it. Not a problem. Don't have a problem. I do have a problem that my little finger hurts, so I can't play today. <laughs> that attitude. Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, it's a team. So the selfishness. You gotta have that every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, I'll back up to myself. Every once a year, you negotiate your salary, negotiate your raise, and everything. You know that for that hour, yeah. you'd be as selfish as you can, little please. Yeah. yeah. After that, suck it up, agree to what you agreed yeah. with, move on, and, and prove that you're worth more next year. I thought that the uh, the Hawks made kind of an interesting statement three, four days ago without saying anything. It's a paid Dwayne Brown. Yeah. So they he has a year left on his contract, the same as Will Thomas does. And Earl Thomas wants to be, and I, there's two sides to it, right? I get the whole, like, you make so much money. And then I also get like, well, anything that we do, you're the best at what you do, and you should be paid better than the guy that you're better than. You know, I mean, well, for the most part, right? I mean, you want to be paid for your performance. And so, which is what he's asking. I'm the best safety in the game. We all know this. Everyone knows this. So I want to be the best paid safety in the game. So, okay. The Hawks have said, we're not going to negotiate if you're not in camp. Dwayne Brown's in camp. Working hard, they extended him three years. You know, and they paid him a lot of money, and I, I, I'm just like, well, maybe they're making a statement. If you'd be in camp working the way you should be working, honoring the last year of your contract, we'd be willing to talk. Well, he's only going to make eight million this year if he plays. Earl? Yeah. yeah. He's only. Only. Well, you know, I mean, and I get the joke that goes with that, that half of it goes to Uncle Sam and blah, 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 but still, at the end of the day, it's a lot more money than a lot of people make. Yeah. And that's okay, you know? I mean, you know, what's a, you know, then you throw in the Jeff Bezos thing of making billions of dollars a day just by waking up. Right. Okay. He got, he was in the right place at the right time, did it, had the, uh, had the tenacity to make it happen. How nice it must be to make so much money that you can literally be like, I'm not coming. Even though you're getting fined like $60,000 a day. Right, And just right. like, whatever. Like, <laughs> if I told you I'm not coming to work, you're like, I'm going to fine you $5 a day. They're like, I'll be there, dude. Like, <laughs> $5 is $5. Like, <laughs> That's a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> we'll buy a jar of peanut butter, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. oh sorry. There you go. <laughs> Oh, Thanks, like, Jim. Let, let's go ahead. Let, let's re -round, rewind the tape here. Yeah. He's been to Yellowstone to go fishing for ten days. Cool. <laughs> He's been to Lake Sh no Lake Wenatchee, Lake Wenatchee. Okay. for the Fourth of July week. Yeah. And now he's going to Hawaii. But, but I mean, that's a that's a honeymoon, right? No. It's uh, my sister's wedding. Oh, okay. Yeah. That I'm extending out a little bit. Oh, cool. Hey, if I'm there, I might as well stick around. Frugal, I yeah. like it. <laughs> yeah. Why go twice? But I mean, <laughs> but I mean, really, who's keeping track? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really worried <laughs> learning about me is I, I, I firmly believe in the work hard, play hard mentality. Yeah. yeah. I work really hard, make money, support the family, do what I got to do, but I'm also going to go have a little bit of fun. Yeah, so. you have to, and you got to do it along the way. Yeah. You got to do it along the way. I, I, if you don't, yeah. You know, Nothing's you, promised. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I, you know, if things come up, I try to find a way to make it work. For and then I started thinking the other day, I was like, well, hunting season's in October. Rory's going to freak out. <laughs> like, usually I'll go to the, well, you won't be able to, my wife will freak out too. But usually go to the hunting cabin in eastern Washington. So, yeah. Well, maybe you need to invite everyone. Oh, I'll bring them. Yeah, absolutely. I'll bring them real. So, one of us, we'll just have to do what I did last year, which is for about an hour every day, I'd have to drive into Republic and then go grab a signal and work on my computer for an hour. Like, okay, what do I got to catch up on? There you yeah. go. Absolutely. So, well, see, I've never been hunting, so I guess I'll just be cooking. Oh, yeah. I'll just be the guy. Oh, you'll have fun. Dude. Are you guys? Back yet? You'd have fun. <laughs> well, actually, that brings up a funny story uh, that I was going to ask you about. Sure. Um, so, you guys at, at the Bill of Fuming, you guys take like meat donations from hunters and that kind of thing? We do. The reason I asked that is it was on TV last year. Yep. In the morning, a guy that we went to high school with, Jeff Summit, who was oh, okay. here to meet John's little brother. Okay. He's a um, gay boy, and yeah. he's on that show. He's one of the stars of that show. Um, Whatever Northwest Woods or something that's on the animals. Okay. Like, yeah. And he caught some poachers out um, outside of Buckley or something, and it was an elk, nice bull elk. And uh, he's like, "Sorry guys, you can't have it." He loaded up his truck and he took it to the Orange Food Bank, and they took it and they had a process. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, is that common or? Uh, we, so we get a lot of great fishing around here too. So I see a yeah. lot more of uh, people who have bought, bought all their salmon last year. Yeah. <laughs> They're catching more salmon this year, so they're getting rid of what they still had in the freezer from last year. The freezer, yeah. uh, and that's all well and good, but what has to happen with that is we have some food safety issues that we have to be concerned about. Um, one, it has to be commercially packaged um, and or you know, vacuum sealed that way. Yeah. Okay, and it has to have the date and the time and who caught it and where they caught it. Because if something happened, they want to be able to trace back and track that it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, just so that we can now identify that, that that source or that bulk packaging or that something going with it to so get it out of the system. Right. Okay. Uh, hunting, same kind of deal. You have to have it uh, professionally packaged and everything. Date stamped, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so the, uh, all that works out really well uh, for folks. If you're going to go out and shoot one and then bring it to me first, I don't have the resources or the money to pay to have that done. Gotcha. Because uh, honestly, butchers make a lot of money and they'll preserve it, but uh, Absolutely. That, that, that deer got really expensive. Yeah, uh, I bet. For it. I mean, it's already really expensive with all the licenses and everything else. Boy, howdy. And all the practice. you got to practice, guys. You want one shot, one kill. <laughs> Good Marine for shooting. Man. There we go. <laughs> Were you Marine? Uh, yes, sir. December 5, same here, bro. Good job. All right. <laughs> there we go. Connections being made. When uh, when were you in? Uh, I was in from 82 to 89. Okay. So I uh, started, yeah, started out in Winston, picked up my commission about halfway through. Oh, nice. Went to flight school, got a shot. Look. All right. So, you decided to get out after that? Uh, well, the choice was to be a public affairs officer for three years or get out. Uh, that's right with the Grand Rum introduction of forces going on. Okay, okay. So yeah. I was like, hmm, not why I joined the court. Yeah. But yeah, look at what I've been doing for 20 some years. <laughs> yeah. The court knows all. Yeah, they do. Uh, they do. They I, know what's I best know, for us. I don't regret a minute of it yeah. whatsoever. I, you know, for, for, for the right folks, it's the right moves. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it just really sets you up well in life to, to lead others and, and be involved. Agree. Completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah, I was in 01 to 05. I had. Uh, a different experience than most, I think, in my time. And uh, it was one of those things I tell people, it's funny, I got out because I was just telling myself I was going to get out. And then about six months after I got out, I was like, wow. You missed that. I really miss it, yeah. And I almost went back, but uh, wife had some things to say about that, you know, and so kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, I wouldn't trade for the world. It was a great experience. So, Absolutely. Yeah. They don't allow me in the real world to talk exactly the way to people that <laughs> we learned how to talk to people in the Marine Corps, but whatever. You talk, you talk to me <laughs> like that. I talk to you like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's 
That's a misconception. <laughs> I'll tell you one, they haven't been on both sides of the fence in the corner and everything. Go, go. Yeah. Teach it that way. Uh, you know, they're, they're really about the coaching and mentoring and all, all those oh, wonderful skills that, that, that they, people make a lot of money by changing the title of the book or calling it full of money management or calling it lean. Yep. They're teaching you all that stuff. Exactly. Um, yeah. Language might be a little more colorful, but... Yeah. Oh, occasion. Yeah. <laughs> and then as you remember, it's either dark green or light green, you're all green. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, and I have some lasting... Lasting bonds and friendships from my time, you know, especially with uh, social media now and you can keep in touch with people. And, well, actually, two days ago, uh, one of my buddies, him and I were stationed together for two years and we stayed in contact. He retired two years ago. It's, it's crazy for me to think about it. He's 20 years retired now as a gunner sergeant. And I'm like, wow, like, where did the time go? So, uh, yeah, so, anyway. More connections. What else you got? Well, I think that's just about it. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, just about it. So what is, uh, what's next on your plate today and the rest of the week? So today I have a vendor calling me on my way here and he's got some old product for me to pick up. So uh, probably some cottage cheese and milk and things like that. So that will be shared in the next couple of days with folks. Awesome. All that good stuff. So I'm probably going to swing around the corner to the, uh, your grandma's car. <laughs> she is. Yeah. <laughs> in trouble now. That was awesome. See, this always happens when we do the show. Yeah. That's this is the time I get the most amount of calls is when we do the show. Yeah, sure. I think I just declined like five calls yeah. in the span of the show today. No one calls until yeah, you're doing something. Like so. We're gonna go around the corner here in the senior center. Um, they they had a uh, an event from there. And every one of their events, they always do a food drive for us. So a little bit to pick up from that. We're going to get thank their director training uh, for supporting the group. Very cool. Yeah. And so Rachel's the director of volunteering or volunteer director down there. She's a volunteer coordinator down okay. there. And uh, we're we're we're. Uh, we're going to change that up a little bit, but we'll, we'll save that for the next show. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Uh, Rachel and I are the two paid staff uh, down there. Everyone else is a volunteer. Uh, our board is a complete volunteer. They are fantastic. I mean, let me tell you, it's been a little bit of a challenging year, and they have stepped to the plate, done what needs to be done. Uh, a lot of change in the last year, so. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and, and they have fully embraced it, so. Awesome. Uh, absolutely. They can't say enough good things about it. So, uh, our volunteer appreciation dinner is Saturday, and uh, so we're going we're to take a moment, take care of them, of course, get yeah. them renewed, so they can enjoy what they're, you know, recognize what they've been doing. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So, thank you guys. Appreciate it. This yeah, has been yeah. a really good experience. I truly enjoy it and everything. Glad and, you can uh, make it down. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. And so. uh, all, any personal opinions were those of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Well, you guys heard it. Fish I mean, is good. Yeah, okay. fish is good. <laughs> um, well, you guys heard it. I mean, Jim and Rachel are the only paid staff down there serving all of you all. So it really is about the volunteers and, and getting down there. So if you're in the area and you have time and, and you're looking for something to do, please reach out to Rachel. Um, down at the Gulf Food Bank, get on their Facebook page. Uh, reach out to Roy and I. We're going to try to organize some team days where we go down there and, and, as a team and just kind of roll up our sleeves and do whatever we can. So, it's, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, I mean, I would imagine you would agree that it's people giving their time and their hours to keep things going. So, I, I'm pretty sure Jim and Rachel could take care of it all on their own. So. Not for very long. <laughs> a couple days. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's about the period of time it would take. So, totally be overwhelmed. Um, yeah, so peanut butter food drive through the end of August. Reach out to Rory and I if you're willing to put up a station in your office or do anything like that, or you know, have a competition or encourage your, the people around you to, to donate. We have a huge goal this year that we'd love to blow past. Um, yeah, reach out to us. You know, and even just reach out directly to the food bank if you have some items you want to take with you. So. Yeah, and really the thing is, all it takes is if you can just donate one pound. Yeah. Just donate one pound of peanut butter and the next person and the next person, next person. We're going to blow this out of the water really quickly. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like Luke said, reach out to us. We'll get it over to the food bank. Um, any last words? Nope. Thank you all for what you do. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Thank Thanks, Tim. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Appreciate all right, guys. Thanks, you guys. Have a great week. Um, I won't be here next week. No. I'll <laughs> no. be flying. Yes. I'll be flying. We'll have a special guest next week. Special guest next I'll week. I'll let you guys know. The week after. I'll be joining from Hawaii. From Hawaii. 
Yeah. It should be fun. From Hawaii. We'll see you guys. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Take care. Good to each other. <laughs>